Maratre, the president of the Maharashtra Ophthalmological Society, to come and uh, talk about the need for such a symposium. Good morning, all of you. Respected seniors, Dr. Polish, Dr. Shikaburi, Dr. Dr. Shikaburi, Dr. Shikaburi, my dear colleagues and friends. It's wonderful to be here at Mumbai for this super speciality contact lens symposium. This is a nice gathering of ophthalmologists as well as optometrists, and this is the lead of the day. Why this symposium? That's very important. Like contact lens practice is the area for ophthalmologists which is a little bit left out there. And from optometrist point of view, they are also trying to reach this particular subject, but then it's not up to the mark. So most of the things like routine practice of contact lens, routine practice of refraction might have been done by optometrists. But then this super specialized contact lens fitting and all those things will be covered in the symposium. So Maharashtra Ophthalmological Society has joined hands for the symposium when Dr. Puresh Mukti Paskati sir and Dr. Chandrasekhar Chavan they supported this idea. Why not to come together? Because this is the area which is not to be discussed only amongst optometrists. Most of the times in ophthalmic conferences, this area of contact lens fitting and everything, this is again left off. Then it's the need of the day. Even ophthalmologists, they should know about it. There are senior ophthalmologists here, they have been practicing on this aspect, on this topic. Like, what uh, optometrist ophthalmologist cooperation was there in the past was like only for sign up to board. Something little bit about contact lens. But the era has changed. Now, there is increase in number of cases of myopia. So we are talking about it like epidemic of myopia. Just now I was listening. It's almost 98% in some of the countries and even in India, it's, uh, it has gone beyond 65%. So what message we have been giving to the society here of ophthalmologists as well as optometrists? The child, when can handle the smartphone at the age of say few months to few years, the parents are proud about it. That's a fine. Like about the smoking, the parents never say that my child smokes at the age of five years. But the parents say, yeah, my child can take that. Then they can handle the smartphone. But that is a wrong message by giving to the society. Probably we have to criticize all these practices by <coughs> this generation, next generation, definitely is prone to this all era of say smartphones and electronic gadgets and computers and laptops and smartphones. This is worst part. And our role is prevention is better than cure. But suppose it has happened, okay, what are the things available in the market? Maybe some lasting after the age of 18. But there are a few other options available, like vision therapy we are going to talk today, orthokeratology and vision therapy. There are so many options people do not know about. It. Like this area shouldn't be left out. There are various research going on at US and UK, even in India, people like Chandrasekhar Chavan, but he has done fantastic means in this particular field. And everybody should learn and spread this message everywhere amongst ophthalmologists as well as optometrists. So Maharashtra Ophthalmological Society as president, I am very proud to be involved in this symposium. For ophthalmologists, doctors, MMC credit hours will be awarded. There are four MMC credit hours. But rather than credit hours, probably all of us are here to learn something about on this topic. And uh, Chandrasekhar Chavan has taken tremendous efforts. And I hope these two days will be very much useful for all of us. With all these words, I think we are late. So I wish all the best for this symposium. Thank you very much. I invite Dr. Kanchan to come and uh, speak to us, deliver a keynote address on behalf of Dr. Rohit Shetty on understanding the unknown. Kanchan is originally from uh, Mumbai, from KEM Hospital, and uh, is currently working with Dr. Rohit Shetty, the Narayan Netra Lab, which is one of the path-breaking research institutes in the country, at the cutting edge of research in various aspects of ophthalmology, one of them uh, being uh, the cornea. 
Very good morning to everybody. Uh, I am Dr. Kanchan Sanani. I am currently working with Nara Netrale, but native of Mumbai, it's always good to be back home. Um, I'd like to thank uh, everyone who's present here for this opportunity. So I'm going to be doing this presentation on behalf of Dr. Rohit Shetty. Unfortunately, we couldn't make it here today. So uh, let's see. Um, I think this is a wonderful uh, meet because uh, understanding how to put uh, contact lenses in use in our daily practice is not something that uh, formal training will help us. And especially a lot of cases that we deal with uh, back in Nara Netrale, like keratoconus, uh, which does require specialized contact lens use. So uh, before we can go on to that, let's try to understand what keratoconus exactly is. It's, it's a multifactorial uh, complex uh, disorder uh, in terms of the mechanisms that are involved in the pathogenesis and how, let's look at how we can make use of those things uh, to find out better ways to manage the condition. So, uh, inherent feature uh, result of our uh, genetic makeup is pre-programmed, it runs on its own. However, these can be influenced by external factors which may enhance or in this case be detrimental, causing diseases like keratoconus. So uh, this is what uh, we call our nature and nurture model, where nature which is constituted by the genetic makeup of the individual and nurture is all the external factors that can affect the genetic makeup or the phenotypic changes that occur as a result of these environmental factors. So let's take a look at what constitutes this. So worldwide uh, we see that uh, these particular regions, there have been various studies worldwide that say uh, that places like Israel, Saudi Arabia and India have an increased incidence and prevalence of keratoconus. Incidentally, these are also the regions in the world that have a high rate of consanguinous marriage. So uh, this indicates that keratoconus, one of the major causes of it is uh, genetic. However, uh, there's not much we can do to take care of the genetic factors. Um, also, uh, it is difficult to map out which genes exactly play a role. Uh, what we know as of now is that keratoconus is an autosomal <coughs> dominant condition, but it becomes difficult to diagnose it uh, on a genetic perspective because it has uh, a non-penetrance and a variable expression in ways it may manifest or look as if it's an autosomal recessive condition. So uh, not much on that front is going to help us manage these patients. So we come to the nurture part of our model. Uh, nurture are the environmental factors uh, that largely influence the manifestation. So uh, microscopic uh, structure of the cornea, as we can see here, uh, let's see what exactly happens in keratoconus. So various external factors like allergy, ATP, injury, and hormonal factors may cause inflammatory mediators to weaken the epithelium. This can cause increased inflammation in the stroma. Now we know that keratoconus is mainly stromal weakening or weakening of the collagen structures. Uh, also, uh, contact lenses in, uh, are associated with microtrauma, eye rubbing. These also behave like noxious stimuli which increase the ocular surface inflammation. So what we need to do is control this inflammation. Increased inflammation in the stroma, uh, it damages the barrier, it affects the barrier function of the epithelium and uh, increases the um, uh, inflammatory factors there. Now uh, what we have seen in our studies is that this increased inflammation is associated with nerve damage as well. There is a different nerve morphology that we see in patients with keratoconus. What uh, we studied was the structure of the morphology of the subbasal nerve plexus in patients of keratoconus and we compared it with that in normal patients. What we found was the nerve branch density or the nerve fiber density was significantly reduced in patients with keratoconus when compared to uh, the normal people. Uh, one of our studies uh, mentions this. Uh, so uh, this is an associated factor, not necessarily a cause effect. So how we monitor inflammation in our patients is that we collect tears using the Sherman strip. The Sherman strips are uh, put into the Eppendorf tubes sent at minus 80 degrees to our grow lab. 
where uh, the proteomic analysis and the cytokine analysis is done after mixing and separating the protein solution from the Schumann strips. This is subjected to flow cytometry and analysis and the levels of inflammatory mediators in the tears are quantified. After which a mass spectrometer helps us to analyze the proteomics and mm -hmm. understand the inflammatory status of the ocular surface which is paralleled in the levels that we find in the tears. So is inflammation driving keratoconus? It's important to know because contact lenses are associated with inflammation. We have a lot of people who are not tolerant to contact lenses. So uh, I've mentioned two of our studies here. Uh, in the first study, uh, we see that uh, inflammatory factors like interleukin-2, matrix metalloproteinase 9 are elevated which have been seen in our tear analysis. Also, uh, pro-collagenetic factors like uh, lysyl oxidase have been seen to be reduced in the corneal epithelium as well as the tears. Also, um, so this basically suggests that inflammation is one of the major driving causes of uh, uh, keratoconus. So, this is when we have compared uh, the inflammatory factors uh, in a patient with keratoconus, we see that uh, high levels of interleukins and low levels of lysyl oxidase uh, are present in them. So uh, what happens when there is decreased collagen synthesis? The inherent corneal structure is weakened and there is a biomechanical weakness. So increased collagen degradation is causing thinning of the cornea whereas um, decreased collagen synthesis is also adding to that and eventually what happens is the cornea becomes inherently weak biomechanically weak and hence ectatic. So this is how uh, the degradation of the collagen goes on in the cornea. Uh, so is inflammation the only factor, the only external factor that we are talking about? No. Uh, recent studies uh, that we are taking up uh, are uh, the association of IgE in patients with keratoconus we are trying to see the independent role of Ig in patients with keratoconus. Now we know that allergy, allergic eye disease, vernal keratoconjunctivitis are very very closely associated with the incidence of keratoconus. Uh, so hence it is obvious that the IgE levels will be elevated in those patients. But uh, from previous studies what we have seen is that IgE may be independently elevated in patients with keratoconus without the presence of allergic eye disease. So in our study, what we did was we compared the serum IgE and the IgE from the tears of patients with keratoconus and we compared that to the same levels of patients with keratoconus and associated allergic eye disease. What we saw or we, what we noted is, a, is an increase in the levels of the serum IgE as well as the tear IgE as the grade of keratoconus increases. Uh, in our previous study, we have seen that when we cross-link a weak cornea, uh, the cornea theoretically should be strengthened and the process of keratoconus should stop at that point. But in a patient who has undergone cross-linking and has a chronic allergic eye disease or a vernal keratoconjunctivitis, he will have continuous eye rubbing, he will have persistent ocular surface inflammation and he will have a limbal stem cell damage. All these uh, factors could be a cause of progression in spite of cross-linking. As we know, we have a, a significant failure rate.